Okay, what are we working on here? This pile of crap Ford motor. Pile. It's said right there, see? Pile of I think it says power, so it starts with P. Oh, powered by crap, all right. Powered by crappy Ford, yeah. So this is a new adventure for Tatro Machine, isn't it? No. I work on all kinds of crap. All right, what are we trying to do here? Where this is basically a piece of junk motor that's been sitting around for about 15 years. It looks a lot better than that stupid Chevy motor underneath right there. This one doesn't have a bunch of oil on the ports. It has dirt in there, though. It's okay. Well, what's been out? Did you just pull the manifold so on there's it? There's the manifold that was on it. Oh, that's not good. It's a 400-inch Ford motor from the 70s. And it could have come in what? You said LTD or what? Yeah, it come in your big Ford, Lincolns, Mercury's, trucks. What happened to the rest of the car? I don't know. <laughs> Long gone. This motor came with the El Camino, so this is a extra piece. Okay. Well, it's complete. Got so the trans on it. I don't remember. It added a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks to the cost. The car it was a pretty. I don't remember which one it was. But actually, the valley's pretty clean. No sludge at all. No sludge. No rust. Which is good. Ports don't have anything in them. For having sat outside for a number of years. Still got oil on the bottom of the thing here. Yeah. Uh, we gonna clean that all up? I already did. Well, what about the drip drip? What drip? All of this nonsense on here. I'm gonna get wet when I start it up. Oh man. So we're gonna put this in our '58 Ford truck if it runs. Assuming I don't sell the truck before I put it in there. And this stuff is. What kind of gasket maker we got? got? Yeah, this stuff is getting old and hard. Permatex. This Ooh. is three bond. Three bond. See, it's not supposed to come out like that. Yeah, I see. I think the tube got old and hard somehow. Maybe we'll get one more use out of it. Get a use out of it right now. Okay. We don't waste anything here at Tatro Machine. No, I only use brand new gaskets on everything. I would never reuse anything. You think she's going to burn oil? Nope. Okay, what kind of oil are we going to run in it? It's got oil in it right now. I High think. mileage motors. <laughs> Whatever's in it. <laughs> okay, whatever's in it. <laughs> ah, shit. That's great. <laughs> shit, it's already timed and everything. I see you didn't disturb any of the plugs, plug wires. No, I haven't touched it. It should be fine. Okay, now what's the story on this new Edelbrock manifold we got going on? Well, I don't want a two barrel manifold on anything I own. Oh, so we had a, okay, two barrel. All right, we're going four so barrel. So you got these nice, big, massive round ports in here, yeah. old ports. Unlike Chevy's, they had a little chicken shit little ports. Yeah, all right. And so this thing should run pretty good once you get a manifold in it. The only problem is the, the manifold where it ran off to. Right behind you. I'm kicking it. This has little chicken shit little ports in here. I think they made this for a, like a 351 or something because it's, it's really small ports. See, my ports are way up here. Right. So these are really dinky. So it needs to be port matched to really make it run good. But yeah, but we're, we're, we're upgrading it anyways. We're right? just going to see if it runs. We don't care if it runs good or not. So more than likely, it's going to probably run all right. And I'll probably wind up going in here and putting the cam in it and doing some other stuff. So, Or maybe I'll just sell it the way it is. I don't know. You never know. Maybe you want it. No, I got it. You project. can put in that new Buick you got. No, but they, you should take a look at that other Buick if you're looking for a decent car. Yes, stay with my stupid cab. All right, I want to just put a little bit of this on there just to, in case the valleys don't seal up right there. We didn't disturb the gasket on the bottom. I so. would never disturb a gasket. I got my finger disturbed. I like we've only cleaned just where it touched. My finger or the part? No, that valley pan there. Okay, see so this is like a low part. It has a, a separate tray and a manifold that comes on and off. What so, exactly does that do? This is called sealer. No, this extra pan. I've never seen that on a 
Well, it keeps the heat off the bottom of the intake. Oh, manifold. okay, that makes perfect Unlike sense. Unlike a stupid Chevy motor that doesn't know how to do something. Smart. Yeah, I've never seen this. They just let the damn crap blow right up under the pan, and under the manifold, and get it all nice and hot. See, everybody picks on Fords and Mopars, but they're so much better than Chevys most of the time. It's just after you spend millions of dollars upgrading and fixing them, the Chevy becomes a good motor. But out of the box, they're piles of crap. So this is just a piece of junk yeah. car motor, basically, but it's got big poor heads on it. And, right, I got you. And all that fancy stuff. Yeah. Somebody sure. forgot to clean this off right here. Who, who did that? I'm just a gunk boy here at Tatro Motors. Yeah, the gunk guy didn't bring the gunk off. So this motor with a cam in there and everything, it probably run pretty damn good. Good valve job on the crappy ass heads. We know anybody that could do that? Not around here. We don't work on car motors, do we? I work on Harleys and race stuff. So unless this is a race vehicle, we don't work on it. Oh, I work on my crappy vehicles so they keep running. That doesn't count, does it? Well, you're keeping your tools from getting rusty. Try to. Where did they, the old car body go that was here? It's behind you up high. Oh. You mean my hot rod? Yeah. You have to turn around and look upstairs. Oh, Jesus, there it is. Yeah, it sure is. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, it disintegrated right into a... Yeah, well, it took up a lot of room here on the floor for the long, right longest the time. How in the hell did you get that up there? One piece at a time. Gee, many Christmas. So anyway, we're going to start this thing up and see how it runs. Not tonight because i got to get a carburetor that will actually run on it. Somebody stole the carb, huh? Yeah, it's a two-barrel and somebody wanted it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I would have started up on the two barrel. But to even make it run, I had to buy a carburetor. So, if I'm going to buy a carburetor, I'll buy a manifold and just use one of my crappy ass holies. And the only problem is these Ford manifolds aren't cheap. I had to pay like 180 bucks to get that piece of crap. It's the newer design Elbrox, so it should run good. It's, they're still making it. That's a plus. It looks like the ports and everything are a lot bigger than the Offenhauser and the Hollies. That I was looking at the older Elebrox. So should run pretty good. At least that's a theory. Now I assume there's a front and a back to this, but I don't know which one it is. There's a tab right here. I forget what the tab went. I'm gonna guess the tab does not go forward. See how it doesn't go forward because there's something in front over there. Gotcha. Right <laughs> that's called a distributor. That's yeah, called a water outlet. This thing over here was in the way of the tab. See, it's got dowel pin for alignment. Yeah, sure. Pretty fancy. Ah. If you want to know what manifold we're using, we're using a number 2171. Okay, some book will tell you what that is. It's called an Elbrock Performer. Looks like it's been performing. It looks like it came off of something that might have been running at one time. Now do you use that gasket cinch sparingly or Oh yeah, I'm just I'm just putting it right on okay, here. I see there's a there's a method to that. Yeah, you put it around a parts that matter. Okay. Just asking for the public with the inquiring mind, maybe they want to know. This is a water outlet, we don't want to leak, so we'll put seal yeah. there. We'll gotcha. Get, we'll I see it's plugged off anyways. Did you notice that? Oh no, that's this is front. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. The back one doesn't. Yeah. Blocked off, but I don't know if it goes through on the head because it looks like they're. I guess it is blocked off. Yeah. So I wasted some goop on that one. Nah, yeah, that's okay. Let me slide. So I don't have to goop up that one. Heat riser. I 
guess this has an EGR system in this one. I thought this was not EGR. Oh well. All right. So we give it exactly the amount of time we need for drying. How long is that? About now. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> Wow, look at that. Looks like it almost fits. Dropped right in there. It's a good thing because I didn't try to check it yet. Wow, look at all this great pile of bolts. Some of these I think hold the motor together. Yeah, I'm guessing that's one of them. We need a ground wire somewhere, so we'll put that right there. I'm going to leave the coil off. I'm thinking those are too short. They go right there. Like how I figured that out? Oh, see, these are also bigger size bolts, too. See, these are 3 eighths and these are 5 sixteenths. We have a clamp for something, so we'll put that in the back so we can clamp something down. We've got a long one for something, too. Ooh, this must be for a distributor wire. We'll put that over here someplace. Uh, I think that goes right there. That looks like a good spot for it. Yeah, let's go to this one right here. Yeah, see, it goes right like that. It's pretty high tech. Well, they always said Henry Ford had a better idea. It's probably had any idea. Okay, I need one more bolt that doesn't look too filthy. It looks like a relatively clean bolt. That must be the one. Yeah. I don't think so. Yep, that's good. We'll go with that one. Okay, we got all the bolts in. Appears that all the holes are plugged. That's probably a good sign, right? Now for this application, From me. Okay, for this application, what do you start in the middle and work out, right? Well, that'd be my plan. Okay. What do you think you're going to torque these two? Uh, the required amount of torque. Okay, which would be I up to you. I'll let you know. Okay, didn't know. Just wondered. Kind of jiggle around, kind of let it self center. This hole has a lot of shit in it, it's not tightening up very well. There, it finally hits them. Just kind of working around back and forth. Shit. Okay. Now we just work our way out. Now, we might have a little bit of an air leak right here. Okay. So what we might have to fix that before we run. What would normally go in there? I'm thinking some kind of a big fitting. Okay. A breather, huh? Or a plug, I don't know. Okay. I'm thinking it's going to get plugged up. The viewers are wondering if that's a ratchet handle of choice, or are you going to switch to a bigger one, or or your arms are just that strong, I'm guessing. Wow, look at that. It is getting hot in this jacket, I know that. Yeah. So 
you don't like you that? see what that is don't you this bracket goes over there to hold those wires see that you mean that one there that's just like that no could be for a throttle return spring okay just nothing to hold them other wires that up it'd be over on this side though that's the wrong size there's our dog yeah with a new new sweater on didn't mean to change your thoughts there, but... I'm going to change my thoughts. It's getting hot in here. Winter clothes. Yeah, that's better. Snow's here in San Diego. Um, I'm not sure if it ever snowed in San Diego. I don't know if it ever did either. It might have done it once, but I don't think so. Here, I like that much better. I'm going to be able to sleep at night. But I have seen hail on the ground in San Diego twice. Or no, actually once. Once in the 60s. And once in the 30s, I think it hit. So it kind of looked like snow, but it wasn't. Okay, so we're going to use that for a throttle return spring, because we're going to have to have some kind of return spring when we don't over rev it. Because being a good quality Ford part, it probably blow up if it turns more than 5,000 RPM. Where does the nitrous inject on it? That's what that hole's there for. There you go. All right. Well, I was wondering. Big volume. We'll get a little bit of whip. There. Now we're bringing out the big guns. Okay. okay. We knew that was coming. Here, did you hear the torque? Yep. Must be factory torque. I always like to lubricate the threads, but... Well, I did lubricate it with dirt and puke and crap. Doesn't that count? Remember, we're not running the bike for long. Okay, now, these are smaller bolts. You don't torque them as much. How much was that? When you feel the bolt stretching, it's a good torque. back over them to make sure they don't move. Well the ceiling's scrooching out so that's a good sign. That means it might not leak. Okay, this one was tight you said? Well, that wasn't tight. Do not know. I don't like that one. torque was that? I think you're about there. That's probably about 35, 40. Probably 35. It's the appropriate amount for the application when I do it. it feels good to me. That looks good. Did you get a clicker going off there? Yeah, I did. Come back and double check the center ones because they're small. We don't use much less, but a little bit less torque. Okay. It's looking a lot better. Oh, I found the name. Yeah, Performer. 400. Okay, good. That's because this is a 400. I mean, I purposely didn't put the wire underneath the manifold, and so it'll be all right. I don't know what that's for, but it's there. This is custom here, too. I'm not sure what that is. It's probably an oil leak waiting to happen. All right. So now we need a carburetor. I'm thinking this one has a, a little bit of a leakage issue. Yeah, look at that. It's missing a couple things there. Okay, what's it hitting on? That's called a non-performer. Non-performer. I'm not. Sure. I don't think this stuff ever even fit together. There must be some missing parts here. There we go. <clears throat> there, that goes up there. I'm not sure what this does. Oh, there must be like some accelerator pump stuff in this thing. That's what they call a double pumper, this isn't it? This must have been a double pumper, yeah. It's got all this fancy crap on it. It's 
It's got two pumpers on it. Look at that. That must have been a high performance application. And it's got a mechanical choke that kind of works. There. There. Yeah, it almost opens all the way. It's the thought that matters, not the actual physical opening all the way part. I wonder if that thing's bent. It's got a bend back there. They probably made it that way though. That way all the air can't get in there. That really makes it flow a lot better when you can't get any air. Oh, no, sure. Water. I'm sure. Oh, this is going to work perfect because it, it doesn't even move. Are these supposed to move? Well, I think so. Oh. It's a low performance model. It almost lines up. We might have to do a different carburetor. Yeah, I don't think that one's going to work. I'm thinking about go grabbing the one off the El Camino, because we know that ran on that thing. And that was a 396 Chevy motor, so that should be just perfect for a 400 Ford motor. Okay. The other problem is we have a lack of uh, no fan. accessories in the front. Yeah, I see that. But we are going to have a little bit of smoke from the tire when the pulley's running on the tire. Oh, yeah. So we might have to do something a little bit better than that. Where's the water pump? That's optional. Oh, is it missing on there? We don't need that. Oh, I got yeah. part of it. Yeah, I see. Somebody pulled that. Yeah. There might have been some pieces we didn't quite get with this vehicle. Over there. And I got a starter motor for it because there's, there's a hole over here. Okay. So we got to plug up the hole in here. I gotta put a carburetor in that might actually work. We're gonna have to do something about getting the motor off the ground so it won't burn the tire and start doing loops in here. We have the special engine stand I right see it. right here. You're gonna run it right there on the box, huh? Yeah. We might have to take the bungee cord off the back of the tranny here just in case it starts to rotate. Okay. Because I have no idea what gear it's in. Huh. But it had oil in it. Okay. Oh yeah, nice and clean. It's almost full. There you go. So we're good on that. So that's just broken in there. Okay. Yeah. And they got the heater delete on it. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, right under the there. intake. Yeah. yeah. Heater delete. Well, we'll it's fix. like a radio delete. It's we'll a heater fix delete. that. Yeah. Oh, I found the coil. Okay, we have to put the coil on it. I did find the coil over in the box. Okay, so we are going to have to run this to make it run there. Oh, I bet you that's what that bolt was for, right there. Yeah, right. Look at that. That's perfect. Yeah, see? I'm good for something. Well, that came with a manifold. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's called a bonus. Look how big that bolt is. For that little... I don't think that's going to work there. Yeah. That'd be a good spot for it, but that's not going to work. So I'm thinking, like, right over here is going to be the spot. We're just testing it there to see if it's going to pass. See, if I was thinking of that, I would have done this before I tightened it up. Oops, I almost broke the carb going right there. We have a fuel pump, though. That might actually work. That's probably good. That's probably good. Here, I need that. Oh, look, that's like its factory location. I think that's where it goes, factory. It appears we have another nitrous hole right here. Okay. See, I uncovered that. When I moved the plug wire, I found saw that. So this is a dual feed nitrous system. Yeah, I one. see. Uh-oh. See, this is too long. Up. Okay. See how we can hold the coil and tighten at the same time. Now one of these here looks like it might be defective. I'm assuming it came off of this spot right here. So you might have to retrofit that with a new end. That goes there. So we need a vacuum hose from here to somewhere over there. We could put a vacuum hose right here and run direct manifold vacuum. Right. That would give you a full-time vacuum. That would be good. Ooh, we have a fuel line here. 
That look, appears to be genuine copper. See, I can put some oil in the bucket, put that in there, and we have a fuel yeah, system. Yeah, it'll actually suck. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be no fire issues doing that. Well, we'll stand by. Bring the fire extinguisher with us? Sure. Okay, so we got to make some motor mount brackets. Get that thing off the snout over there. You gonna buy a new water pump for it? No. But I did buy this. What you got there? Oh, starter. Oh, wow, look at that. Boy, look at that race. Best money could buy on eBay. Full bit, full race, wow. Yeah, it was like... It was like $50 for this piece well, of paper. Well, that's ground. pretty nice. Well, it might even work. They said it would fit this application. And you know I believe them. Well, the guy only had an 85% feedback, so. Is that all he had? Yeah. That should be plenty. We're yeah. going to trust him. It appears that I have a threaded bolt on one and a three bolt on the other. Well, it fits onto the bell housing at least, but I don't know if it lines up with anything once it's in there. Seems like it might work. So I need to get a couple bolts. Looks like they're about three inch coarse, about an inch, inch and a quarter long. So we'll go grab those. I'm thinking the battery cables are going to be have to be a little bigger than this. Yeah, probably. Do you think I should read the instructions? Or? I would. Okay. Are the bolts in there? Here, make sure you read the instructions. Made in, yeah, desiccant silica. I definitely want to make sure I do the correct thing here. I wouldn't want to destroy it. Oh, it appears that it passed some kind of a test once. Look at that. Boy, those Chinese are something else. Yeah, that makes it worth a lot more money when you get this piece of paper. <laughs> well, it came from Ted Cycle. Oh, be darned. Look at that. It's a motorcycle part. I thought this was a motorcycle. What other instructions did we get? I guess this is the only other instruction we got. Now, does anybody know how to use one of these? I'm not sure how to use this. Well, I don't know what they would use them in there for, but... Oh, this appears to be a sealed bag. Damn, no way of getting in. I found a way. Oh, look at that, they got pictures and everything. I'm gonna tell you how to do it. Jesus. Oh, there's your wire. Where's that go? I was just gonna hook a big battery to it and go zzz, and start it with a big screwdriver like I started everything else I own. I hope we're not supposed to do it the correct way with the relay and all that, that's, wow. that's way, way too much work. I'm thinking just a big piece of metal jammed in the starter and light it right You could off. do it. Yeah. That saves the arcing. It gives you a good spark show. Yeah. Nice spark show. All right, that's it. We'll, we'll conclude the rest later.